Hello, everybody. Welcome to part three of the Octurian Anthology. I literally just finished filming part two because, as most of you know, I am traveling right now. So you are watching me from the past talking to you now in the future, if that makes sense. Anyway, so I've already blessed the space. If you saw the video last week, I blessed the space asking for all of our guides to come in. This is going to be a quicker one, part three, because we're leading up to Sanat Kumar, who's the part one of the um, Octarian Anthology. So this one's a bit quicker today. Um, I can't wait to see how you guys are responding to this work. I really am, dig even though there's some things that Tom Kenyon and Judy write that I do not agree with, most of that has to do with the fact that we just know now more about what they've hidden and all that kind of stuff. And again, as I said last week, with a channeler, you have to understand that when a channeler is receiving information, he or she is receiving and filtering that information through the lenses of his or her own understanding and reality. So some of the stuff that they talk about in this book, I think if they were to be shown an, al an alternative like Tartaria, they might shift their perspective on the information they receive from the Octarians. I'll just leave it at that. But today we're going to actually be talking to the Hathors again, which we just finished up the Hathor material, which was written by Tom Kenyon as well. So let's see what the Hathors have to say in this grand introduction to the Octurian channeling. The Hathors say, our origins are in another universe than yours. We are from a parallel universe that is contentious to the universe you reside in. From our perspective, contentious universes are laid out next to each other in rows, much like eggs in a carton stacked on top of each other. That makes sense. And we've talked about the multiverse before. I did a huge deep dive years ago into the multiverse, and I will put um, some of those episodes down in the description box below if you missed them. These are energetic lines or channels that flow from these universes to each other, especially from those closest ones at hand. And one of the main entry points to you, your universe is through Sirius, which is a major stargate or portal. We entered this universe at the request of an ascended master and star starship commander named Sanat Kumar. He asked us to enter this universe because we were balanced between the feminine and masculine polarities of our being. And our entire civilization has gone through a transformation and ascension in vibration. We've become very fond of this Sunat Kumar and recognized him as an exquisite mind, a brilliant strategist, and an unyielding warrior on behalf of life. As we deepened our relationship with this unique master, we came to realize his qualities and the other Octarians we encountered in your universe. For us, the Octarians are a unique blend of qualities. They possess some of the highest intellects in your universe. Their technologies far surpass any other intergalactic civilization, and they share an inherited amusement regarding existence as we do. But their amusement is slightly different than ours. Our amusement comes from being in the fifth or the twelfth dimension. We reside solely in the light realms. We navigate outside of time and space and never fully enter it. The Acturians, however, are amused at existence because they find it exhilarating to drop down into the lower frequency realms when needed. They do not do this lightly, for it takes immense energy to lower the frequency late to the of their ships into 3D, which we spoke about that in part one. So if you missed part one and part two, that will be in the description box as well. They prefer to operate in the higher frequency domains, but rest assured they can materialize into 3D existence if needed. This Octurian quality to view existence with a type of amusement comes from their resiliency and their adventurous of their spirit. The Octurians are tremendous strategists and logical masters. They tend to view situations multidimensionally and simultaneously analyze from their perspective of the past, the present, and the future. This complex holograph way of viewing situations they encounter is an inherent quality of their nature it is not a learned behavior it is in their dna sanat kumar is a protector of your earth your solar system and your galaxy as well his first direct encounter with earth occurred in the reign of the world you now call japan this took place approximately 10 million years ago he descended in his ship 
and interacted with highly advanced group of beings who lived in a remote mountain area of Japan. This very location is revered in modern Japan and marked by a shrine on Mount Kumara. As a highly advanced Akturian, when Sunat Kumara touched Earth, he saw holographically the past history of your planet to the present moment in time, which was 10 million years in your past. And he saw the entire flow of events into the future, which is now your present. The this Mount Kumara is revered not only by the Japanese, but by the Arcturians as well. The Arcturians do not worship Sunat Kumar. They recognize that he is one of them, one of the highest expressions of the Arcturian potential, but one of them nonetheless. He will let the Arcturians speak for themselves. We simply wish to open the door and pay homage to an old, old friend. <laughs>